One of the most important things that we learned in grade 11 was how to define an acid and how to define a base. So I've given you the Bronsted, Lowry, or the Lowry Bronsted definitions here of an acid and a base. There is another definition that you need to know, which I'll go over in a second, but this is the more accepted or the one that we refer to most commonly nowadays. An acid is a proton donor. So when we say protons, we mean an H plus ion. This over here is a proton. So an acid is a proton donor. In other words, it gives away an H plus and a base is a proton acceptor. Something else that I wrote here that is important to note, it's just the terminology that we use. Acids ionize. So an acid can ionize in water. Bases dissociate. I'll explain the slight difference in a second. But first, here's a list of common acids. So their name, their chemical formula, and also their strength. So if they're strong or weak, and you need to remember Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 and it's strong. You need to know that sulfuric acid is strong. You need to know that hydrochloric acid is strong. You need to know that ethanoic acid or acetic acid is weak. These are things that you must study. And what do I mean by weak or strong? I will also revisit that in a lesson. Here are some common bases. Same thing, the name. I've also given the common name in brackets, the formula, and if they are generally considered to be strong bases or weak bases. Again, these are things that you need to study. If we say ammonia, you need to know that ammonia is NH3. And you need to know that it is considered to be a weak base. So remember I told you that there were two ways that we can define acids and bases. The first definition is called the Arrhenius definition. And I've pasted the definitions over here for you. You do need to know this. We can ask this as a definition. So Arrhenius defined an acid as a substance that produces hydrogen ions. Okay, there's the proton, H plus ions, or hydronium ions when they dissolve in water. And a base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions when they are dissolved in water. This definition is fine. It still holds up in most cases, but the issue with this definition is that it limits acids and bases to aqueous solutions only. Remember, aqueous is when I dissolve it in water or when it reacts with water. It also limits bases to hydroxides, so bases that have OH minus ions in it. But we do know that there are bases, for example, ammonia, NH3, which is a base, it's a weak base, it does not have OH minus ions in it. So that is an important thing to note. This definition is good, it exists, you must learn it, but it has some limitations. Here is a reaction equation that shows what happens when an acid, so in this case it's hydrochloric acid, reacts with water and it forms our hydronium ions. So there's our H3O plus ions as well as a chloride ion. I'll explain again where we get this from. How do we know that it forms these things? It's important that you are able to complete an equation like this. And my bottom equation is an example of a base dissociating in water. So it's breaking up into its ions. And you can see here it's NaOH, sodium hydroxide, and it breaks up or dissociates into Na plus ions and OH minus ions. There's the hydroxide. And that is where this definition comes from. Then we've got the bronsted lowry or the lowry bronsted definition or theory. And they said that an acid is a proton donor in the presence of a base, which means that the acid will give away an H plus ion. And a base is a proton acceptor in the presence of a base. So the one gives away, the one accepts. That's also why it's called a proton transfer or a protolysis reaction. Remember the proton in this case is H+. So they're transferring the proton. So the characteristic properties of acids, so what gives acids their properties, can be attributed or ascribed to the H atoms in their compound. So it means that because of these H plus atoms, because of these um, protons, that's what gives atoms their properties. So when an acid is diluted with water, a chemical reaction occurs, it's known as ionization, and we form hydronium ions. So generally, when we think of hydronium ions, H3O plus ions, we think of acids. When we think of hydroxide ions, we generally think of bases. So the formation of hydronium ions is basically when the proton, the H plus ion, reacts with H2O. And here we go. What makes a base a base? What is responsible for the base-like properties or the alkaline properties is the formation of the hydroxide ion, the OH minus ion. And just by the way, 
Sometimes you hear that bases are called alkali substances. So a base that is soluble in water is called an alkali. That's where that word comes from. So bases, NaOH, dissociate or break up in water. And this is the equation I showed you earlier. It's aqueous because it's dissolved in water. It's the ions dissolved in water. And this is very important. So bases generally dissociate, which means that they break up into their ions. But this weak base called ammonia actually ionizes. The reason why this one is called dissociate and this one is called ionize is because over here, the one that dissociates breaks up into its ions. These are ionic substances. So it consists of a metal, which is the sodium ion, Na+, and OH minus the anion. So bases generally dissociate because generally they are ionic. However, ammonia, NH3, is actually a covalently bonded compound. So it doesn't dissociate or break up into ions because it's not ionic, it's covalent. So it actually reacts with the water and it forms NH4 plus and OH minus. And remember, this is all about a proton transfer. So acids are proton donors. One of the H's from the water, the water is acting like an acid, okay? Waters on waters known as ampelite. It can sometimes be an acid, sometimes be a base. I know that can confuse people, but in this case, it's acting like an acid and it donates the proton. So it gives away one of its H pluses to the base. So think about it. H2O, it loses an H plus. So now it's no longer two hydrogens. It's got one hydrogen. It was neutral. It lost a positive. So it's got a negative charge. That's where the O. H minus comes from, and that H plus is given to the base. Remember, bases are proton acceptors. It was in H3, it becomes in H4 because it got an extra H plus. So, again, there's a lot going on, but this is basically a summary showing why acids ionize. So, it is a polar covalent substance, it ionizes in water, so it reacts with water, and in this case, it's forming Cl minus an H3O+. Remember, when you see H3O+, you think about acids. It says here, strong acids ionize completely in water. And this is the definition of a strong acid. It is something that you learned in grade 11. It is something that you need to know in grade 12 as well. So what happens is acids are proton donors. It gives away the H+, plus. it gives away an ion, and donates it to the base. That's why the base was H2O, it becomes H3O plus. Why does it become plus? Because it gains a proton, which is a positively charged thing. Then it was HCl, but it's now lost a proton. It's lost an H plus. So it's no longer HCl, it is now just Cl, and it's a minus because it lost a plus. Very, very important, and we will discuss this later, but HCl is a strong acid, which means that the equilibrium lies far to the right, it means that there will be a very high concentration of hydronium ions. So if I know the concentration of the acid, I will therefore know the concentration of the hydronium ions. And this becomes important when we're calculating pH later. And as I said, bases dissociate, which means that they dissociate or they break up, they ionize, ionic, separates in water, becomes Na plus and OH minus. Because this is a strong base, it forms a high concentration of hydroxide ions. So if I know the concentration of the base, I immediately know the concentration of the hydroxide ions. And this will be important when calculating the pH of bases later on. And just remember the exception, in this case, the weak base, which is ammonia, it's not ionic, doesn't consist of ions, it's covalent. So it doesn't dissociate, it ionizes. Slight, slight, slight difference. But it is important to know. That is our first recap lesson on grade 11 acids and bases. In the next recap lessons, we'll go over other important terminology and things that you learned in grade 11, but you need to know in grade 12. Bye, everyone.